Hello and welcome back to Let's Try. We're trying Space Cats Tactics. I've been uh, playing this for a little bit and uh, it's it's a quirky one for sure. Uh, it's either going to resonate with you or it's not, I think. Um, it's got some pretty interesting mechanics. It's a kind of by the book tactics game and I think that that is going to work for, uh, for some. Um, it's trying a couple of things. It's got a, a, a few mechanics you've probably seen before, but in a, um, I guess a new way. The uh, one thing I will say, the loading screens are kind of long, so I'm going to go ahead and pause here for a moment. All right, and we're back. Um, so this is, uh, isn't a roguelike. I know that's uh, wow, what, a, what, a, what an innovative idea, right? Um, it is a single player story based tactics game um and it's kind of space simmy but i'm not really sure yet it hasn't really opened up for me yet i've been playing this game for about an hour just to learn the mechanics um and uh you know been kind of rolling through the storyline the storyline is uh it's it's something it's really something i <laughs> i know the i know the devs probably going to be watching this I, listen i i appreciate what you're doing and i i you know all i'll say in and i mean this in the best possible way is it is um corny and like i say you're either going to be cool with that or you're not the actual gameplay is fine like it's it's a by the book tactics game so like if you don't like the storyline you can basically completely ignore it and just play it as a tactics sim game sure but uh, let's let's get into it basically uh, cats have been genetically altered to be super soldiers and we are playing as mitzi and Bis bitsy bixi um who are have stolen this ship uh which has a name which i have forgotten um and we're trying to escape the the local you know space police basically and um just kind of find our way around and and uh you know make our way through the the galaxy um this is a uh, what one thing i will say I, that i have appreciated um in various different uh missions and by missions i really mean just different regions of space um is the kind of variety that the game has had in terms of like mechanics so like this one we've got um uh, this kind of like asteroid dodging uh space where there's these like moving asteroids that we can we can we can blow them up i mean check this you know check this out we can we can blow them up and there's probably some stuff inside although there was nothing inside that we're gonna enter turn can we move at all yeah we can move uh we've got like a passive uh effect where we get an extra turn after, after we've moved we can see the direction that the asteroids are moving in so it'll be pretty easy to move around um our uh movement our guns our various systems are dictated by uh, basically an ftl style um ship managing minigame uh which i will show off in a sec there sure are Bisky. A lot of wrecked ships out there this is what happens when crew stops paying attention like we might I'll, we don't deal with that scientist somehow. I'll showcase some of the storyline here. Please, sir. We should be kind. She's very nice. I don't care how nice she is. She could ruin this whole operation. Yes, sir. Um so uh, we found a stowaway on board our ship since it was stolen. We didn't really or you know, Mit Mitzi and Bisky didn't really have a, a chance to uh do a thorough check and so uh, we have a, a sto you know, some some third party character who I, I have a funny feeling they are gonna come around to their, um, you know, their mission and and po possibly become a new crew member because we haven't really had that many crew members. And I mean, so you know, speaking of crew members, they do kind of they actually do have a, like a mechanical um, perspective in this game. So we've got uh, Bisky over here minding the engines. Because they are in the engine room, they are offering us a speed bonus when it comes to uh, how fast and how far we can move per turn, um, and also how many action points it, it costs. Um, you know, potato, potato. Uh, yeah. Mitzi here is managing the energy room, which means that we actually get weapons. And this is basically my like go to formation for a while. If we want to like uh, mess around with you know collecting stuff, then we can set, send someone to cargo. And yeah, I mean this is like a little very loose um, kind of ship management 
uh, game and, and it's going to offer us bonuses here and there. Um, I will be honest, uh, so far it's it's felt a little bit arbitrary, but I'm sure that uh, it's going to, you know, maybe become a little bit more deep in the long run. I, I appreciate that it's there, really, is where I'm at right now. I don't really necessarily um, appreciate what they've done with it so far, but... Get a tractor beam ready. We need to move that debris before we can get closer. Yes, okay. So how are we um, use tractor beam on the wreck to clear the way? Oh, okay. This is a new, this is a new one. Oh, that that asteroid is also making its way over here. We'll end the turn. That asteroid's gonna very quick and kind of like glance by. I will say uh, there's I've, I've noticed some complaints in the reviews about optimization. I do kind of share those uh, those th that viewpoint. Um, I, I think the game does run kind of sluggish, and as I say, the loading screens are a little bit long. Um, but that being said, it's not that long, and it's not really the biggest thing to get caught up on. Like the game is a stupidly cheap for for offering like a, a full campaign, and it's it's got a quite a lot going on. Um, so I don't necessarily think that it's like the end of the world. But I do understand. I think it's a valid complaint, but uh, I just I, I guess I don't share the fervor in which it is being like, uh, you know, criticized. So we're going to go over here. We're going to use our tractor beam to move this. This is something new. I haven't done this one before. And then we can move through this debris. Looks like there's a barricade up ahead by the, the space police. Well, it looks like that asteroid moved directly into that other asteroid. And that one uh, did leave a little bit of stuff. I think we can actually reach this. Use our tractor beam to collect some goods while we're at it. Everything does cost some action points per turn. It only really matters uh, when we're in combat. So, you know, like we maybe don't want to collect resources while we're being chased down by uh, other units. Whoa, you made it through that debris field. Yes. Thanks for letting us know about that. Thanks for we made it, but you made it right. Uh, come on over here and give us a hand. Looks like we better help them quickly. They're almost out of life support. Sir, there are pirate ships hidden behind that caravan. Those whisker twisting, no good, low down, dirty jerks. I'm gonna. That's close enough. You've been fortunate enough to find the famous Long Johnson. I'm sure you've heard of us. Oh wait, I know you. You're from that toothpaste commercial. Yeah, Bisk, how, how did how did that go again? Toothy toothy, toothy toothy, toothy. toothy. Space, Space junk, junk fruity. fruity. Brush your teeth. That's, that's our, our duty. duty. <laughs> I'm not from that commercial. If you have a look at your scanners, you'll see uh, we've been uh, we've got you surrounded. Now this probably won't cost you too much. Just our luck. What's next? Radioactive space lights? Uh oh. Is that foreshadowing? Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, I appreciate that this game actually does have voice acting. I have a funny feeling that more will be uh included later because there are some like notable excerpts where uh certain characters are not act voice acted. I'm wondering if we are trying to flee right now, so I'm gonna back up. Because there are a bunch of pirate ships over there. Are we... Yeah, okay, they're, they're coming to meet us now. There's some uh, interesting kind of like tactical terrain stuff occasionally. Like, uh, for instance, we could like... Since we have really good movement, um, which I have upgraded with... There's a tech tree and, and such like that. So, like, since we have very good movement, we could like completely outrun them and then run them through the asteroid. Uh, these like collisioning asteroids. And, um, you know, so there's there's interesting kind of env environmental stuff like that that you can make use of. Uh, there was a mission with some, like, uh, gas clouds that we could kind of, like, navigate through, um, like, speed through and then um, blow up and do a bunch of extra terrain damage. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, you know, there's, there's uh, tons of tactical advantages that you can, you know, make use of in that regard um so i don't know if that's something over there that we need to worry about i'm not going to worry about the pirates too much right now i know that they are a pressing matter for sure but we have like such insane movement speed that they they probably will not get to us anytime soon um honestly just going to come over here and like 
Are these drones? Do I have to worry about these guys? I'm just gonna blow up this thing and collect some more stuff. We can scan. I don't I don't know if I have uh no crew in room. Scan an object to reveal more information on it. Scan enemies take more damage. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, no crew crew in room. So I would have to assume that we would want um, someone to be in the bridge in order for that to matter. Now, here's a here's th something I'm not sure about is I actually don't know if moving someone out of one room to another takes action points. If it does, it doesn't really make a give you know it doesn't make a good job of uh telling me about that and um it seems to me that if it doesn't cost any action points then there's not really much like mechanical purpose to moving Commander, people out. around those look armed what space junk is this who would put a sentry in all this mess these are badly built look at all those cheap parts stay alert bisky seems like we're not the only ones out here you know, like, if it doesn't cost you anything to move someone out of one room to another, then um, I I'm not really sure what the point of the mechanic is in the first place. You may as well have, like, offered everything at once. If it costs action points to move someone out of one room to another, then you actually have to have, like, you have to make a choice and you have to decide, like, oh, do I want to spend, or, um, you know, my major resource, uh, of, you know, like, basically prioritizing one room advantage over another one um like you know for instance right now i, I you know i have someone in the in the the uh, bridge so i can scan these these guys that does actually cost me some action points uh six wow that's a lot good lord that is a lot of action points to, to, to dedicate to something like that um but in, in, in any case we're gonna move mincy yes. back into the energy room so that i can start blasting away at these lads um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't have enough action points, unfortunately, to do, uh, do my fire beam. Is, is he in the energy room yet? He is. I don't, I guess I don't have enough action points to do either action. So we're just gonna, you know, our main bonus right now is our movement speed. We should pro- we'll probably- nope. Never mind. I was hoping that we would have enough, um, movement speed to get away completely, but it, I don't think so. So this guy's probably going to make it to us and do some pretty nasty damage. I was a little worried that they were going to explode on us, but they didn't. Um, they only did shield damage, which is very, very renewable. Uh, and it works basically like every space game you've ever played. Like energy weapons do damage to shields. Um, kinetic weapons do damage to, uh, you know, your hull. You have a hull integrity. Um, shields are easier to renew than hull integrity. You got to do repairs and stuff like that. And so, like, you know, in that regard, we haven't, we're not really seeing anything new, um, but it's just executed well, I think. Like, I love how we, they've done, like, the animations on some of these weapons. I think they're pretty cool. We'll, we'll whip out some, uh, some beams. We're taking more shield damage. This is fine. I do like the beam. The beam's pretty cool because, uh, like, it's one action to do uh, a beam damaging multiple enemies at once which i think is pretty nifty and also um it like your your actual location matters somewhat so we're gonna i'm gonna go ahead and just like fire a couple of beams a couple of basic lobbies here and then i'm gonna you know flee uh we could take a moment to um renew our shields on the next turn it does what what uh, not enough action points it doesn't tell me i guess unless i have enough action points yeah we're below the halfway mark here um it's i guess it's a, maybe it's a free action no it shouldn't be a free action convert remaining action points to shield okay so it, it's it's con context sensitive uh well in that case let's just go ahead and you know dedicate a turn to trying to eliminate another one of these so that we don't have to worry about yet another gun. I'm playing this, I guess, a little bit like Battletech because I'm still in Battletech mode. It's always a good idea to eliminate a gun off the field so that you don't take as much damage. I'll turn that down just a little bit. And uh, we're going to go ahead and collect all these goods. We get research points. We also get uh, cargo stuff. 
from uh, from destroying stuff. Um, there's actually some pretty good like I, I appreciate the stuff you get. It is actually like fairly game changing. Like we can look at what we've collected so far. I got an energy weapons amplifier. I actually I think I bought that and I forgot to equip it. So we'll go ahead and equip it. Cargo room is unmanned. Okay, well, so we've got to man the cargo room um, yeah. in order to mess around with this. Yeah. I generally keep Bisky in the engines and I have Mitzi running around doing other stuff. Uh, I do appreciate the, the space to like, space button just like swaps between tactics mode and ship mode. Um, we also get these cargo boxes. These are basically gotcha boxes. So we got some hull repair kits and some shield batteries. Let's go ahead and use a couple of these. Yeah, one of them actually almost fully upgraded or uh, repaired our hull integrity. Um, we'll go ahead and throw this energy weapons amplifier onto our ship uh, we got some damage weapon parts those are actually really good for selling and making some money as well as some damaged tractor beam parts those are really really good um it has a joke here about sometimes can be gifted to purple hair i have to wonder is this actually a joke about stardew valley because that's kind of out of left field but um i've kept one of these just in case it has some kind of mechanical value later down the road um, I don't know what's going on with those pirates. They sure are taking their time coming over here. I don't know if I have to get over there, but, uh, you know, I'm just kind of like doing my thing. Yeah. Um, gonna go ahead and, uh, you know, get, get what I can get here. Collect the cargo. Tractor beam is a little bit faster again it's a it's a like i i like this game and there's some uh you know for the most part i think that the the mechanics have their heart in the right place but then again um there's also some odd choices like uh tractor beam can be wait no that that's not the one um where is it yeah tractor beam mark two pulls objects faster as far as i can tell that doesn't necessarily have much of mechanical effect other than the animation just is quicker and that's unusual um it doesn't seem to like make much difference other than you don't have to sit here and wait for this animation to happen as slowly uh which i i just don't think really like just make the tractor beam faster <laughs> like i don't think that i should be uh paying points for that but maybe i'm completely wrong maybe uh if it happens faster it means it doesn't ha uh, cost as many action points um We'll see. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong about that. This costs two action points. I wonder if I can like refund this. Uh, already have. No, I can't. Well, whatever. Uh, maybe, maybe the complaint there isn't so much that uh, a mechanical one as an explanation one. That's usually my complaint is that I don't understand the mechanic um, well enough. So I don't know what's going on over here. Let's uh, let's see if we can uh, actually show off some some tactical combat. These guys are are actually like coming on over. They are super slow. I've had like an entire mini adventure while I've been waiting for them to, to roam their way over. But now we have increased laser damage, so maybe I'll do some extra damage to them. Um, I think that this marker on the on the action will tell me when I can't use um, an action after I've moved. So if I move here, that means I don't have enough action points to use the laser beam. And if I confirm, yeah, it costs six action points. And so if I move over here, I'll only spend four action points and then I can still use my laser beam. Uh, stuff like that is is nice. Um, I wish that maybe we had even more information like for instance What is the uh, combat range or the movement range of the enemy and like how far can they fire? Um, stuff like that is 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 helpful for making uh, making meaningful decisions as a as the player But uh, you know we can move up we can we can take a shot we can move back um, oh, I didn't mean to do that actually fine we spent the rest of our non points uh recharging our shields so they're moving up do they have enough um no they they regenerated their shield so that's fine we'll just uh take a shot uh like i say this this weapon um i guess it is an energy weapon 
seems to not do very much damage to their shields um, whereas the beam weapon does quite a lot of damage to their shields whereas this uh, energy weapon is going to do a lot more damage to their um hull you'll see right here how much damage they do to their hull and it seems like i am getting very lucky uh proficiencies bonuses where i get to make extra firing shots i think that is fairly lucky i don't know if i like maybe they've explained to me already but um you know like they probably did let's be uh, wait oh ha here, here we go chance for a free action okay so you have a chance for a free action so i got very lucky and i was able to make extra shots and um and did so and, and was able to basically completely kill that uh vessel i do wish there was a fast mode like uh you know an option for these animations to happen very quickly it's um, something that is generally offered in, you know, other tactics games. This is basically a one man dev uh, or one person dev uh, game. So like, you know, um, these are wishes or desires, not necessarily critiques. Um, you know, I understand that, that they've worked pretty hard to, to, to get this, you know, out. And I, I, I think it does show like there's a there's a like a lot of heart in this game. Um, let's well, we'll do like a sweeping beam here. Yeah, you can see how much damage to the uh, oh I got I got I lowered the shields on three of them there And I'm pretty sure that was a free action, too All right enemy so uh, one thing I will say I really appreciate is that when the enemy is like very low on uh, Their hull they will actually like run away, which is um, Something I think that you know other games could take note from this uh generally speaking i've seen a lot of uh, tactics games where they just like you know stay in do or die uh till they're you know the last turn like they're dead but like this guy's like okay their hull is almost gone by all rights they should be fleeing like that is just that just makes sense um there's absolutely no reason why anyone would double and triple down also it it does mean they uh, have a tactical advantage because if they rejuvenate their shields as they have done they could potentially come back and and uh, d double down later so you know it makes a lot more sense um i'm out of beams so i'm just going to be doing some uh, loose fire we got a free action out of that so we'll fire again um let's hope for another free action nope we'll rejuvenate our shield a little bit so they're coming back now that their shield is back We'll probably uh, triple down. Oh, this guy's running away. See, um, but maybe I can get them to uh, if I get them to group up a little bit, maybe we can hit their shields like I did before with a nice beam attack. Um, all right, let's uh, let's just like try and take this guy out. We're going to need a free action or else uh, basically we're not going to be able to do anything. Uh, looks like this guy is tractor beaming me. I didn't know what that meant, but it looks like it, it affects our movement. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. I wonder if I can like tractor beam someone else. I've never tried to do anything like that. Doesn't look like it. I should probably scan them. It, it, it would be worth doing um, if it meant that I could actually like take them out. But uh, let's let's try and um, get a good beam going on here. Here we go. Oh, we almost took them out with that one beam. And uh, this guy is likely going to flee on his turn, but we can at least kill that guy. Okay, this guy, he is uh, actually doubled down on um, doing that beam attack and keeping us rooted in, in place. And that will be their uh, undoing because now they are super dead. And we have enough points. Um, why don't I go ahead and throw Miss Mitzi in the bridge and then we'll scan this guy. Scanned. And then um, I'll go ahead. And this is like I don't understand necessarily. Like, uh, I, you know, here here would be a, a simple semi fix here is you can only keep a ship scanned if you keep someone in the bridge. Like if as soon as, as, soon as you move someone out of the bridge they're no longer scanned would be like kind of a simple fix to make the the ftl portion 
of this game um, make a bit more sense. But I think right now uh, it, it just kind of doesn't really fit. It, it is kind of like a, a, an awkward tetramino piece in this in this game that, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, you know, obviously you have a moment to moment advantage to, um, uh, you know, having someone in a room, but since it doesn't cost anything, it does, you know, like there's, there's no reason you can't just swap people out, uh, at the, the drop of a hat. It means that there's actually like no, uh, mechanical difference. There's no tactical advantage to, to keeping people in a room. You can just swap them out whenever. Um, and like, again, maybe I'm completely off base on this. Maybe I'm missing something obvious, but uh, that's how it feels right now. Okay, so this guy over here is actually a long range. Um, what, are they, what do you call it? Um, uh, well, he's long range. Let's just keep it at that. I can't remember the word, but um, we're going to move out of those danger fields. Um, and to see if we can't go in and meet them and do some do some damage so they have uh, they that's a two turn thing they have to kind of commit to that action once they've done it I'm gonna move over here I'm hoping that this guy over here will either fire up on me um, forcing this guy to kind of navigate around that or will join me in which case I can get a cool beam thing going on course i'm also gonna have to kind of navigate around um yeah i think that that's a far enough away i'm not gonna take any damage from that I'll just do some damage we got a free action we can do some more damage this is good it almost looked like they hurt themselves but i know they didn't so that's him dead i'm actually gonna take a moment here while i'm over here to um break crack open that asteroid and, and uh grab that greed is good you know got a we've got a bunch you need um you do need some resources to move on to the next stage it's kind of like the thing that gates the uh the different stages is um you need peranium and yeah there are a lot of puns in this game it's like i say it's, it's either going to resonate with you or it's not and I, I'm cool with it. I can understand it rubbing some people the wrong way, but I think that you're really gonna have to get into the mindset of this game. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's quirky. Let's put it that way. I think that that is, uh, you know, I, I want to be kind because like, you know, it's, it's not like it's offensive in any way. It's just like, it has a lot of cat puns. And honestly, I think it's like, it, when you like, um look at it from an absurdist standpoint it's actually hilarious like some of the loading screens like genuinely crack me up because there's like like uh space marine outfits with like little cats in the in the windows and that that really cracks me up it's too close okay that worked out really well I can't believe I apparently you can take out an entire ship with that beam weapon And uh, we're just gonna grab the stuff Captain Mitzi, sir. There's another thing over there. I want to grab uranium and ready to warp out Don't forget to flush the coolant primer drain What the uh, Bisky, why does that scientist have a communicator? Um, sir, please don't be mad. She seems polite what if she was hungry or something? Bisky, what am I going to do with you? <laughs> it's so fascinating to observe pirate code in real life. I've only read about it in the data files. Me too. Okay, that one is just not voice acted. All right, time to head back to Eros. Or it was really quiet. All right, uh, I'm gonna go get this thing and I'm gonna go crack that thing open and get that thing and then we're gonna go and uh, I'll show off like the market as well as how you get your missions as well as uh, maybe some of the uh, like how big this game is and and you have a, a kind of a good idea of like whether or not you it's worth your money um, I think uh, let me let me just double do a double check here because I, I don't want to lead anyone astray and I'll, I'll tell you how much it costs for me um it is 
well right now it's on sale but it's 20 20 dollars canadian i mean uh that's that's really reasonable um i don't know how long this game is but even if you got like six to eight hours out of it it's got a lot of like honestly i think it's got some pretty good replayability at the very least like there's a lot of different builds for your um research team or research uh tree we're gonna we're gonna warp out we'll have a look at uh the map we'll see how many different missions there are available and um also you can see like how many different things you can buy but um this is like how much game i would say there is and uh like it just hit 1.0 i don't know if the dev is honestly planning uh more like if there's a road map i don't i don't know necessarily it's not something they have really kind of like put on display i think it's like they've they've hit 1.0 and and right now let's celebrate that and we'll worry about if it, the game uh, is gonna get like major plot updates or um content updates in the future we're gonna hit Eros station uh, this is a common uh, kind of place that we uh find ourselves um traveling to for uh selling various resources um and uh you know outfitting our ship i'm gonna do another pause here there's an incoming signal it looks like it's down perfect heading to the bridge Dal, you won't believe the pirates we just ran into they have to be the mitzi you son of a stray where in the nine space hells have you been i told you to be at eros oh, just flying around the block you know stretching the legs out on this ship what's the big deal i actually i have to say i really like some of the, the soundtracks in this game this one in particular really gives me like spyro vibes we're going to get this ship to you soon don't worry oh it's always the same ask for one thing but get another oh what's next you bring me a dead bird instead of the ship just get into the station i have to say that some of the dialogue between the characters is like borderline abusive <laughs> like the way that mitzi talks to bisky is just like absolutely uncalled for <laughs> Um, and like similarly the way Dal Gabo Gabot and I, I have no idea what like is that a pun? I can't tell Sir, are you okay? Is she mad at us? Maybe Bisky, but something doesn't feel right Sir, it looks like they have all entrances blockaded now. What do we do? I guess we get in line. Let's head over to the rest of those ships. I hope Dal knows what she's doing Satisfaction pilot. I ain't got no clue about no curiosity ship. Uh oh. Here's the satisfaction. Um, the the discovery is what we're on currently. Papers or blasters. Sir, look out over there. These are ships warping in. Bisky, get us out of here now. Do we have enough puranium? No, we don't. So what is happening? Looks like these uh, these guys have like major beefy ships and are just wiping everyone out. These aren't regular ships out there. These are military grade spec ops. Sir, we only need a few peranium to be able to jump out of here. Be on the lookout for peranium from destroyed ships. We're going to need some of our nine lives to get out of this one. Okay. So there's some puranium there, um, but I kind of don't want to like jump into this mess. Um, we could collect puranium from shipwrecks and warp out of space. So we, I mean, we could jump like run in there, but I have a funny feeling I'm going to die instantly. Uh, okay. Let's see what happens. If they attack me immediately, then I'm I'm hosed. I notice I do have a uh, third member now. Wonder if she could be in the uh, engine room, or uh, oh yeah, they hit me. Oof. 
Ouch. Oh my god. Fire. Biscuit. Quickly. Go deal with it. This is scary. <laughs> if you don't go now, the fire will spread to the other rooms. This is your chance to show your worth. I'll do my best. Fire level will grow at the end of every turn. After the highest level, it will spread to the next room or corridor. Send your crew to deal with it. With fire levels at the end of every turn, the crew will lower the fire level by one. Your shield or hull are too low. Use consumables by pressing I. Oh yeah, okay. Um, well, let's do that. We've got tons of stuff. Yeah, of course, no one's in the cargo room. Where's, uh, where's Laura? Laura is now, um, able to do stuff. So let's send her to cargo for now. Um, we'll send, uh, Mitzi yeah. to take care of the fire. Despite the fact that they told me to send Blisky. Bisky. All right, now we're, someone's in the cargo. Let's crack open these uh, gotcha boxes. Um, energy weapons extender extends your energy weapons by range one. Okay, that sounds fine Not enough action points. Does it so it costs action points to Equip stuff. Oh, apparently it does. I just used up all my action points. Well, I probably just killed myself I do wish I had a, a bit more like Maybe maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe It was telling me exactly that. What does it cost? Oh cost one AP to consume okay yeah so i shouldn't have been doing that um and equipping something apparently also costs ap but it doesn't really say that some of these things are just not made as clear as they could be uh imo okay so uh we are probably gonna die we can we can try our best but um i don't have any movement if these guys come over here to attack me as well, then then I call foul play on that one. Okay, yeah, that's it. That's game over. Oh, yo, I'm dead. I'm dead, though. Good lord. Okay. BRB. All right, let's try things a little bit differently this time. Uh, I'm just going to let all of this take care of itself. And also, let's get Laura in the reactor. Let me have a look. Just like right away. And we're just going to like run away. I don't know how much movement speed they have. Oh, this is like the edge of the map. Oh, that's very misleading. Okay. Well, this isn't, so we could have gone that way, I suppose. All right, let's end our turn. Let's see if they're going to move, like, directly over to me. These guys look like they're aggressive on me, which really doesn't make sense. To my... To, to you know, in my opinion. But... Um, these guys are kerfuffling. There's more pre uranium over there. I don't know. Maybe they're all working together. These guys are working together. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll, I'll go. I'll give them a wide berth. We've got like ridiculous movement speed right now. So we'll give them a wide berth, have them chase us around, and then uh, try and swoop in and grab the pre uranium. All right. Yeah, I, I, I kind of just wish this was faster. And when there's a lot of units on the screen, it starts to feel uh, very sluggish. All right, we're just gonna blast over here. So I guess there's three chunks over here and that is uh, what we're gunning for. This guy is going to come over here and try probably destroy this last ship. None of them can uh, hit me, which is good. 
We're just gonna gun it as fast as we can. Well, it's a, kind of a shame uh, that this sh this station has been completely ruined because I was gonna show off um, some of the goods you can buy and sell and maybe a little bit more uh, like hint of story. But I mean, it's also pretty cool that, um, you know, like they are advancing the story and probably what will happen is we'll have to go for, uh, go find a new station that we can hang out at. I wonder if we can tractor beam that from here. How, long, how much would that cost, do you think? This is gonna cost two action points. Oh, we just barely can't grab that. We could do a little, like get, go a little bit closer here. Let's see if we can um, grab it from there. Nope. We need to be quite a bit closer. Like uh, that close. So we can grab that. Really? Oh, we could have grabbed it, I think, a lot sooner. Shoot. Okay. Um, we're probably going to take some hits. But we, I think we have uh, better shields because of uh, Laura. Laura in the reactor. We can also um, do some tweaks to these. I'm not sure if we have the ability yet. Double passive and active recharge rate of shields per turn. Um, well, that's not it. Uh, whoops. Is it? It's the enemy's turn, so I don't know what we're seeing. Ooh, okay. So that's uh, another of the ships dead. So we could probably gra grab that puranium. Have we taken a hit yet? No. Cool. So let's grab that. Please. And then we just have to grab that last bit, uh, like one more Puranium and we should be good to, to leave. Um, we're going to give them a, a wide berth so that they can't hit us, hopefully. We can probably take like one volley. So these guys are working together. So that makes a bit more sense that they were gunning for me. I thought that they were part of the ships that were basically being put on blast. Oh, this guy's getting kind of close. Not close enough to hit me, though. The uh, the enemy doesn't cheat in this game. Like, they operate under the same um, kind of mechanics that we do. So they do have action points, and they have to uh, kind of, you know, operate under that, which is nice. I appreciate when uh, a game does that, and it doesn't just, like, give them free action points or make it so that movement doesn't cost as much for them or, you know, like make the uh, opponent operate under different rules than the um than the player so we're, what we're probably going to do i don't think it costs any action points to warp out we're just gated behind um how much puranium we have is we're going to go in uh tractor beam that last bit of puranium and then warp out we'll probably take a volley here i don't think we can avoid that no we can we totally can apparently all right let's go like, again, I kind of wish it would show me how close I need to be to, to tractor beam, but we only need two action points to tractor beam. So this should be close enough. Grab that. And then warp out. <laughs> nice little uh, cutscene, actually. A ship got hit while going through hyperspace. The reactor is about to melt down. At the last moment, Laura managed to fix the reactor. Okay. Yeah, I mean, why not? We could probably go to a Neon Tokyo. Um, it would be a different station at the very least. Walk freely on my ship. What is going on? What have you done to my beautiful ship? This isn't the time, Laura. We've got this under control. I can see that. I think you need to check again the definition of under control. Pisky, I need a status report. What just happened? It looks like we were hit with a subspace torpedo during FTL, sir. Without Laura's help, we would have been stuck in warp space forever. Is that a definition of out of control? <sighs> Thank you, Laura. I admit, Bisky was right about you. All right, we need to get past these ion storms. I assume you are smart enough to avoid these, right? Don't test my patience. Hey, Neon Tokyo shouldn't be far away. I hope no one will recognize us there. 
Oh, and Mitzi. This ship's multi-drive engine. It's really one of a kind. Given the right material, it has the ability to interact with the fabric of space and time. They are after it, and they won't ever stop. Fire! Bisky, quickly, go deal with it. This is scary. <laughs> if you don't go now, the fire, I'll... Apparently there's a fire. Uh... Odd. Okay, let's send... Uh, we'll send Bisky in this time. See how that works. He's putting out the fire. All right. Um, I would love to go check out the station, but it's, uh, you know, one, one thing we could do is I'll do a pause here and see if I can get to the station and then show off some of the goods you can get. But I don't know if that's necessarily going to be the make or break for, for you. If you aren't really into the tactics that you've been seeing, then you might not, uh, it might not make a difference if you're, um, you know, if you see some of the other depth that the game uh, has on offer. Um, personally, I appreciate the variety that is, uh, you know, included in each mission. Like every new sector has offered something a little bit different, which is kind of cool. Um, and uh, I also have to say, I'm, I, I appreciate that it's just been like a very straight shooter, um, you know, tactic single player campaign and uh, not try to jump on in, like any wagon. It really is just like trying to be a good game. And I, I think in uh, it is succeeding with some caveats. <laughs> I think that there are a couple things that uh, probably could use some polishing up, but um, as it is now, it's like by by all means, it's it's worth you know playing. It's a good game as it is now. Um, well, hello there, little shit. Yeah, is that is that Nick Cage? How are you? Where are you going? when they do that oh oh okay oh they uh okay so this might offer a bit more in terms of like why you like you have to huh. Seems to be the problem here. like having having a, an on crew mechanic makes a bit more sense when they can actually have people board your ship also did we not deal with the fire We do have an intruder. Yes. It looks like Mitzi is uh, under fire. Um, can we have Laura um, come help? Commander, finally. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Hmm. Let me have a look. And fight hmm. the intruder. Let me have a look. No. What seems to be the problem here? This isn't over. <laughs> Thank you for assisting us. But we were doing fine on our own. Were we? Doing fine? Our shields were done for. Bisky? Yeah, so much for thanking me for saving your fur. I'm Lizzie, by the way. Leader of this happy gang of mercenaries. Mercenaries, right. Like all of us. <laughs> I assume you want to head to Neontogia Station. It's the only real free space in this galaxy. A heaven for people like us. That sounds lovely. Can't wait to arrive there. Say, that is a fancy ship. What did you say you were doing out here again? We didn't. I have to say, I appreciate their ship design. These actually are like higher fidelity than an, they have any right to be for a, 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 like a top-down tactics game. They could have phoned that in like real hard. Oh, never mind. Everyone has secrets anyway. Ah, there she is. What a gorgeous place. Come find me later. We're heading into the Iron Storm for some adventure. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's check out the station. Okay, apparently we dealt with the intruder, but also Mitzi is like dead. Question. Qu Hello. <laughs> oh, listen, I'm I'm trying. I'm trying. All right, hold on. Okay, there. Mitzi's fine. He's back up. He's all right. 
We still have this like a cargo pod hanging off of us. I don't know if they were supposed to send a cargo pod in like on their first turn. So that might have been a, a little bit of a bug. Um, I don't know. Let's check out the station real quick. They're probably going to throw some more story. No, never mind. We're cool. Uh, we'll refuel. We'll check out the shop. Um, actually, before we do that, let's open up our cargo. Because this is all uh, meaningful, like, currency, basically. We could do a hull repair. Let's do a hull repair. And um, we could. Uh, we don't have to worry about shields, I suppose. Oh, well, let's do a shield. It's fine. Whatever. Um, we'll check out the shop. The shop is selling armor plating um, plus 20%, shield booster plus 20%, energy weapons plus 25%. And I mean, like, I, I kind of appreciate that they are like meaningful upgrades and not just like a plus 0.5% chance to do more damage or something like that, or plus, you know, extra crit. It's, it's kind of nice to see a game just like here. Yeah, the, like the modifications are actually meaningful and um, like that you'll see a, a difference like right away um we're gonna go ahead and sell stuff like damaged tractor beams those are like purely given to you to sell um we can also sell these scrap parts that's gonna be a lot of money actually wait are these can be sold okay i don't think that they have any i don't know if there's crafting in this game i don't think that there is we also have an artifact mysterious relic which we can sell you can sell it on arrow station i think it was probably supposed to sell it but i i really don't know um so we can buy new rooms modify existing rooms can we modify the reactor we can move it i think that's what modifying is buy new rooms so we could buy a missile room or a drone room so this will allow us to have you know more uh more stuff going on on the ship um but yeah let's check out what we can let's uh, i would probably buy like everything and then at a certain point like we only have so much room um on our ship for uh like equipping stuff so that's something to keep in mind uh, like uh, eventually we're just going to run out of room here and then we sure check out the bar. Here. Real, I feel like I should balance out the music a little bit. Oh, no, I can't do it from here. Really get used to this place. Maybe after the whole thing calms down, we could return here for some relaxation. Hey, Laura! It's me! Harry! So much for not being recognized. Harry, what a coincidence. A friend of yours? Yeah, Harry and I go back a long time. Since... Uh, are you just friends yes <laughs> oh laura automata is furious i heard that the ceo is looking for you what are you doing with them it's complicated listen harry you did not see us promise me you won't say a word all right i promise oh and automata is a mess right now the shareholders are trying to take over the company from whew, many angles. Yeah. Why should we care? Well, you know, there is a lot of unease between the corporations and your cat people. A lot of people are furious with you. Furious? I'm used to humans being furious with us. Uh. Oh, and one last thing before I go. There have been reports of dark ops ships heading towards this location. You better be careful. We will. Thanks a lot, Harry. Goodbye. Goodbye. This guy. Is he? I don't trust him. Nothing to do about it now. Let's go to the coordinates Lizzie left us. Okay. So, I think you've seen a pretty good representation of the gameplay loop. You go and do a mission, upgrade your ship. Um, you got to get enough puranium to, uh, you know, get to the next place and uh, and it's, you know, more, but also the game displays a good amount of variety. It's got a story um, like take it or leave it. It's got a story and um, I, I would take it. Um, I, I appreciate, honestly, that they went to the trouble of actually including voice acting. Um, IMO, it's like on the fringe of being good, like it is very borderline almost not good 
but like it's also really difficult to find really decent voice actors and i think that they did a good job um for the kind of budget that this game is representing like it's you know no no offense but it is a fairly small like it's a small team it's a very indie game so i think with what they're working with like they didn't have to have voice acting at all they could have completely shipped this game without voice acting and i think that that would have been totally fine and within expectations so i actually appreciate that it does have that voice acting i think that a lot of things in this game actually display a really good amount of polish for what it is um and you know at the end of the day it's like for me all i really care are uh, care about are are the mechanics good do they display a, a, a like a certain amount of depth do it like does my brain turn off while i'm playing this game is it that shallow no it's it's actually not that shallow at all like it's it's got some stuff going on it's got some teeth i mean i died uh i, I think that it is a little rough around the edges when it comes to optimization i think the loading screens could stand to be a lot shorter um and i do think that it gets a little bit framey but i don't think that those really break the experience i think they just you know it, it is a it's a valid criticism but it doesn't necessarily ruin the experience for me so um cat tactics sorry space 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 cats space cat tactics um if you've played it let me know in the comments um if you have some opinions about this game you can let me know those in the comments as well and i'll see you guys next time take it easy